Woodrow Wilson was America's most imperial president. He believed in American superiority and using military force to unite the world under a League of Nations based in New York. From 1913 to 1920, Wilson dispatched American troops to Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Mexico, Cuba, Panama, Honduras, Russia, France, and Turkey. He manipulated the American people into a disastrous intervention in World War I, which prolonged the war, killed millions more, and led to World War II. See the short video below. After World War I, Wilson joined fellow imperialists to carve up defeated empires into smaller states. Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire were dismembered. France grabbed an oil-rich region that became known as Syria, while Britain seized oil-rich Iraq and Cyprus. The remainder of the Ottoman Empire was less valuable and filled with intermixed ethnic groups who were promised their own nations. The Allies supported a Greek invasion of western Turkey to reclaim lands lost centuries before, while Armenia was granted lands it once ruled, but now occupied mostly by Turks. Other ethnic groups wanted independent nations, but that was difficult as there were no clear boundaries. Turk officers dominated the Ottoman army and rebelled against the Ottoman royalty. They considered the concessions granted the Allies for peace too extreme. Rebellious Turks quickly defeated the few loyal royal forces and formed a secular government in 1920. The victorious allies had withdrawn most occupation forces from Turkey and were not interested in fighting to create new nations of no significance. Turkey played no role in the American economy and was of no interest to Americans or members of Congress. However, President Wilson saw an opportunity for another American crusade. He ordered the U.S. Navy to deploy a dozen warships to the Black Sea and landed forces to secure ports. American ships offloaded humanitarian relief to the devastated region and transported military supplies for the white Russians who were fighting the new Bolshevik government in Russia. President Wilson dispatched a military commission to report on the situation in Turkey, led by Major General James Harbord. The commission report is linked below. During his six-week tour, Harbord found much famine, violence, and instability in eastern Turkey. In particular, newly formed Armenia was weak and threatened by Russia and Turkey. President Wilson decreed that historic Armenian lands were part of a new Christian nation of Armenia. This western region had become mostly Turkish after decades of Armenian persecution by the Muslim Ottoman army. Armenians had been harassed and killed, causing many to flee to other nations. Wilson's decree was a serious insult to the new nationalistic Turkish government and was sure to cause fighting. The Allies provided military aid to the new Armenian army, but it couldn't secure these new borders occupied by the Turks. After the revitalized Turkish army drove out the invading Greek army in the west, it moved forces eastward to threaten Armenia. President Wilson was eager to provide direct military support even though General Harbord reported this could require up to 200,000 American troops. A massive American military expedition would face danger since the Turks could attack British forces guarding the entrance to the Black Sea and shut off that route. In addition, the British and Americans had dispatched some forces to fight against the new Bolshevik government in northern Russia. Russian forces now advanced southward to reclaim lands in the Caucasus to include parts of Armenia. Placing an American force into Armenia was madness. Nevertheless, President Wilson asked the United States Congress for the authority to establish a mandate for Armenia on May 24, 1920, that would fund a huge American military expedition to Turkey. 
The United States Senate rejected his request by a vote of 52 to 23 on June 1, 1920. In September 1920, the Turkish-Armenian War broke out. The First Republic of Armenia was defeated in November 1920 and gave up territorial claims to Western Armenia that President Wilson had promised. Thousands more Armenians were slaughtered during this war. Within a year, Russian forces had invaded Armenia to form a new republic for the Soviet Union. The Treaty of Kars formally divided Armenia between Turkey and the Soviet Union. The U.S. Navy continued humanitarian aid and evacuated refugees until it withdrew from the Black Sea in 1924. Thousands of Armenian refugees immigrated to the United States, and almost two million Americans claim Armenian descent today. They advocate for their homeland and demand that Turkey apologize for the deaths of a half million Armenians that they call a genocide. Turkey refuses and insists that all ethnic groups suffered during World War I and the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, and Armenian deaths were unfortunate casualties of war. Had President Wilson succeeded in dispatching a huge military expedition to Armenia, thousands of American troops could have become casualties too. Thousands more may have become prisoners if the Turks and Russians defeated them.